We seem to click and yes, I was with it. I had hopes and dreams of one day to go far. Little did I know that I would be scarred. Mild heart attack, 17 years old. No rhyme or reason, that's how the story unfolds. I graduated high school and went away to college, but moved back home. I was sick of the nonsense, party living it up. I fell into depression, ready to give life up from unlearned lessons. I fell to my knees and prayed to God who made me. I asked him in my life. And he saved me. journey and I truly know that I learned so much from my throwback my mom cared so much she would never give up she stood in the gap and showed me what love was it's amazing I have a beautiful wife and two boys I'm raising they're the loves of my life always by my side no matter where I go they support my music and pray for my shows and when I get back home ha it's so blessed nothing can replace the time we spend when one journey stops another begins so I can't pretend this is where my story ends Tell me, do you really want to love me forever? Oh, oh, oh. Or is it just the hit and run? <laughs> hey, we got a good thing. Don't know if I'm going to see you again. 2011. Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show. 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. My most overrated but media-loving, fan-loving list is coming together. John Gruden's been added to the list. <laughs> yeah. Most overhype. Um, most chance given fan loving people in football. Jeff Fisher uh, that don't deserve it. Jeff Fisher, Matt Millen, Rex Ryan, John Gruden, uh, who I think Gruden's a good coach, but I think he's you know, uh, I think he's given a lot more hype than he really is. I mean, he ain't that great of a damn coach. He didn't do nothing really when he was uh, uh, when Oak when he was in Oakland. And he got to Tampa Bay and won a Super Bowl on the heels of Tony Dungy's players. I mean, what? Yeah, um, I almost think that Gruden wants to stay. And I'm gonna read some of your messages here in the chat room on Spreaker.com. And I like Gruden. I'm not going to say I, I hate Gruden. I don't think I'm not going to say that I think that he's not a good coach. I just I just once again I think he's been overhyped. But it almost seems like that Gruden doesn't want to go back to coaching because he doesn't want to be exposed as being not this Vince Bar- v- uh, Lombardi like type coach. Like that's kind of like what happened with uh, with Jimmy Johnson when uh, when Jimmy Johnson went to Miami after he left Dallas and he was the head coach in Miami, then Jimmy Johnson without Michael Irvin and, you know, Troy Aikman and Emmitt Smith, I mean, he was an average coach. You know what I'm saying? Right, he was an average coach. So, and a lot of it depends on the players you got. I understand that. I get that. But look at what he did in Dallas and look at what he did in Miami. Same thing with Nick Saban, man, when he was the head coach in Miami. Look what he did in Miami, and look what he did when he's got the top talent in the world, (laughs) you know, at Alabama, and what he did when he had top talent at LSU. you got to have players. It's as simple as that. I mean, make no mistake about it, but but John Gruden, the the narrative behind John Gruden is that he's the next, or he's the modern-day Vince Lombardi or something like that, which I don't think that's actually the case. So I need one more name to put on my list of most overhyped football people. 
I got Jeff Fisher, Matt Millen, Rex Ryan, John Gruden. Uh, we need one more name. Let me read some of your messages in the chat room on Spreaker.com from Team Broadcasting. What up, Team Broadcasting? When are we going to talk about my Milwaukee Bucks? Bruh, I got I got some Bucks notes here, but we ain't going to talk about Matter of fact, y'all ninjas say y'all don't want to talk basketball. <laughs> what? Talk to your fellow Stewies, uh, team broadcasting. Y'all don't want to talk basketball when we're in football season. That's what y'all said. Uh, and what he's referring to is last night, uh, the Greek freak. I'm not even going to try to say dude's name. <laughs> uh, the Greek freak hit a buzzer beater to beat the New York Knicks. Um, what are the notes I have? Since 1973-74 season, only Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, and Scottie Pippen have averaged at least 20 points, 8 boards, five assists, and two steals in a season, okay? Think about that. Think about the company that the Greek Freak is is joining uh, or is part of right now. Entering Wednesday, uh, I'm not going to say his name. I was tempted to try to say his name just now. The Greek Freak, 6'11 dude, can do everything on the basketball court, can dribble, can shoot, can dunk, can post up. He can do it all. The Greek Freak, he's averaging 23.8 points, nine boards, and 5.9 assists. 1.9 1.9 blocks and 1.9 steals. He's shooting a career high at 53.6% from the field. Wow. In this day and time, shooting over 50%? Wow, that's great. And cats don't shoot over 50% now. That was the norm back in the day, but cats don't shoot over 50% now for the most part. Um, so, I mean, he's balling out of control, uh, but it is the Milwaukee Bucks, bro. I'm sorry. I really don't. I did have that in my notes, but once again, your fellow Stewies don't want to talk basketball. Which I don't give a rat's ass. We talk basketball around here. We love the association around here. (laughs) Yes, sir. We love the association around here. I do have a basketball story, though, I was going to touch. I'm going to talk about Russell Westbrook here in a second. Uh, we will get to that, but I wanted to read some messages in the chat room on Spreaker.com first. Uh, from Sydney Stoney Jackson, Doug, you on drugs today. Chip had two NFL coaching jobs in four years. He had plenty of time. No, when I said he didn't have enough time, I'm talking about in San Francisco after losing his job for one year. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm not I'm not talking about his entire career. From RC, Singletary lost his job after he showed his ass at halftime. Yeah. Yeah, Andre Elam, like you will never see Mike Singletary as nobody's head coach again. Probably not, man. There's a real negative stigma on, on Mike Singletary. Um, it's not good, and I hate that because Mike Singletary is one of my favorite, man. From Sidney Stoney Jackson, John Gruden, they acting like that bastard was Vince Lombardi. <laughs> exactly. Um, who else we got here? From R.C. Moss, T.O., seven days a week and twice on Sunday. He has better hands made tougher catches, and despite what folks say, he would go over the middle when needed. So somehow the Stewies got talking about wide receivers, maybe because I brought up, um, who did I bring up earlier? Oh, I brought up uh, Megatron, Calvin Johnson earlier. Uh, He says, Moss greater than, he used the greater than, less than sign, (laughs) old school, like we in elementary school or something like that. He says, Moss greater than T.O. seven days a week and twice on Sundays. Oh, I agree 100%. I'm on record. I've said it for many, many years. I've been scolded for it for many, many years. If I had the opportunity to pick one wide receiver that I've seen, you know, I ain't see, I really didn't see Lenny Moore, or anybody like that, Bullet Bob Hayes from the 70s, the early 70s and 60s. But if I had my choice of wide receiver, it's not even a question. Over uh, uh, Terrell Owens, Owens, over Jerry Rice, I am taking Randy Moss. Yeah. From Sandman, he says, when Giannis, and his name is Atagampopko, or something like that, I tried. When he gets a three-point shot, that boy is going to be a major deal in the association. I agree. Um, and once again, I don't watch a lot of Milwaukee Bucks basketball, so I, I, don't, I don't watch him day in and day out. But physically, 6'11", you know, Dirk was 6'11", but Dirk wasn't as athletic as this kid. This kid is like kind of like a, a combination between Dirk Nowitzki and, and Sean freaking Kemp, okay? 
So, yeah, he's he's really, really blossoming into one of the best players in the game. Easy, bruh. From J. Rob, how are we going to be a barbershop talk show and not talk about basketball? Exactly. Man, ninja. They don't want to talk basketball. We don't want to talk basketball. It's still football season. Ninja, please. We're going to talk basketball around here. <laughs> We're definitely going to do that. From that ninja, 20 points, 8 boards, 5 assists. What kind of arbitrary ass numbers are those? Shut up, you basketball hater. Shout out to basketball hater from uh, Thorny Switch. Happy Founders Day to all the noops, too. Oh, yeah. Ha- happy Founders Day to the noops. <laughs> Sydney Stoney Jackson. <laughs> That's funny. He got a picture of the great Stoney Jackson. Remember Stoney Jackson used to be on Right On Magazine every week? Hated that ninja. He says, uh, team, I warned you. Dudes get mad in here when we talk NBA during football season. 15 hours of radio a week and folks get salty with a little NBA talk. Exactly. But trust me, ain't nobody studying them folks. Ninja. I'm Cornelia Small. All the greats say Moss was better, but can or would be out or would he outwork them? It doesn't matter if you have more skills, but your dedication and work ethic is what makes you great. Well, I, I hear that. And a lot of people say Randy Moss took plays off or whatever. My brother always used to talk about that and how Randy Moss is, you know, he takes so many plays off. Well, damn it, if, if Randy Moss takes off a couple plays, but I get the other good Randy Moss, I'm fine with it. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Give me Randy Moss beating, you know, triple coverage. You know, give me Randy Moss doing that and taking off a couple plays. I'm fine. I'm good with that. We good. I'm going to get to uh, more of this chat here, too. Some good thoughts in the chat. I'm going to com. When we get back from the break, man, I mentioned I kind of teased the Raiders thing. We'll talk about the Raiders as well as Russell Westbrook. More basketball talk. Oh, the third hour is coming up. We call it. For the new people listening, we call it the Power Hour. Yes, sir. Don't go away. Back in three minutes. This is the Doug Stewart Show.